a second storyteller, Melissa Jacob. Melissa is a writer. She's had a couple of stories published recently in The Good Weekend and I think she's got one coming up very shortly. She's also a school teacher and a very, very good storyteller. Please welcome to the stage, Melissa Jacob. In the early 90s, I enrolled in New South Wales Uni to do a double degree. I studied theatre studies and English literature. But I enrolled in this degree really only just as a bit of a backup, as a formality, because I planned to be an actress. That's what I was going to do. I was going to do acting. And so when I was studying at New South Wales Uni, I totally immersed myself in everything theatre there. Every play that was around, I was in it, basically. And then a note went up outside the Fig Tree Theatre, the big theatre that it was at the time at New South Wales Uni, offering auditions to the students there. And it was a big outside director who was involved with Sydney Theatre Company. And so I was really, really excited. I read the play, read the extract, and, and I thought, no, I knew, I could feel like in my bones that this role, this main role, of course was going to be played by me, that it was, it was written for me. It was written for me so much that it was as though someone actually knew me and my acting skills and repertoire and they wrote a role specifically for me. And so I rehearsed, I got all the lines down and we did sort of an ensemble audition and then after that we did like the solo audition and we were told that about a week later the cast and crew list would go up outside the Fig Tree Theatre. And so... It was a really long, long time until that day arrived, but it, it did arrive and everyone was crowding around this list outside the, on the door of the Fig Tree Theatre, this painted, you know, theatre black door. And, and I walked up but I, and I went to have a look, but I was at the back because I was really confident that I had been given this role. And it was really surprising when I looked at the list because I was on it, I was in the list, but just like a really minor character at the bottom in the chorus and the main part that I'd been planning to play was going to be played by somebody who I shall name Portia okay and I'm not mentioning her name because you would all know her from film and tv today so I was I was furious who was this Portia who had taken my role you know she was clearly not as talented she hadn't been in all of the other plays that I had been in at the university like, who is this Portia? And so the day arrived that we got to have the first uh, meeting and rehearsal and we got to meet the rest of the class and, and I'd spent so much time just thinking about who this person was and, I, and I'd sort of set it up. It was like she'd stolen my part and we were already in, like, this competition together. And so when we got introduced, I immediately felt like I was in like not just a race in that particular play it was like a race in life he was this Porsche with this you know she was this kind of thin boned gorgeous woman with long blonde hair and flawless skin and she was just exquisitely beautiful this woman and you would know her from tv and and film so I'm not going to mention her name in case you say something to her and she'll embarrass me once again but um, every time we were rehearsing, like sometimes they'd have morning tea and I always felt like it was us just walking up to get, you know, a piece of fruit or the last lamington and she'd always be there before me or she'd always take the last thing that I was after and it was like we were in this competition. And, and any of you have been involved in student theatre or community theatre, I like to think that it's very similar in lots of ways to communism. Now, just run with me with this, because in theory, in communism, it's all about everyone you know, being equal. Everyone's on an equal playing field, and all the profits and all the spoils are all divided equally. Okay? And that's what's meant to happen. And that's kind of what's meant to happen in student theatre and community theatre, that you're all in it together. You all pitch in and do the hard work and the hard yards, and if there are any profits, you, know, you all share it out at once. But those of you who have been involved in it, you know that's not really how it works. And so this one particular day, we'd bumped into the Fig Tree Theatre. Previously, we were rehearsing in another space. And the play was set on a beach. And so the crew had hired this big lorry filled with sand. And it was our job, you know, as part of this, you know, communist spirit of this student play, for us to get wheelbarrows and wheel the sand into the theatre and then use our shovels to put it on the stage and spill it all around. And there was so much sand. The stage was so big and all down the front and the aisles and that kind of thing was so big it took us all day and into the night. 
Okay, it was really, really hard work. And everybody pretty much got involved in, in doing it and working hard, everybody except, you know, who poor shot it, okay? So here I am, I'm like digging away with the shovel and we've got like a... Um, a sort of chain, a line, we're passing down the buckets up onto the stage and things like that. And I was looking over at Portia and there was no sweating from her brow or anything. She was just sitting with the director running her lines and she'd sort of become best friends with the director by this stage. And the director of the play actually happened to be going out with Kate Blanchett at the time. So she'd pop over from NIDA and they'd all sort of chat and share coffees and laughs. And I'd look over at them and I was so, so jealous. I was so jealous. Here I was shoveling sand and there Portia is running her lines and sipping coffee and just throwing her head back. <laughs> just laughing, okay, while we're doing all this work wearing overalls and looking hideous. And I looked over at Portia and I thought, you know, you may have the main part now. But this is just student theatre. This is, you know, this is nothing. When we're in the big time, when it's professional, then I'm going to get the main part. And not only that, I was thinking that I'd probably be artistic director of a theatre company. And I'd even get a look in to see if Portia even got to audition at all, okay? And then in my scenarios, I'd sort of sometimes fantasise and think, yeah, you know, I'd, 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 sometimes I'd be gracious and let her audition and other times I wouldn't, I'd say no. And so I had all these fantasies that one day I thought, I'll show you, you know, in this race that we're having, in this competition, I'll show you. Fast forward about five years later. In the meantime, Portia had sort of got all these roles on film and TV and, you know, you'd know her face from a, here and there. And I got this really fantastic job teaching drama at a school out in the western suburbs. It was a pretty rough school, if I could just give you an idea of what it was like. I was quite excited, actually. I saw myself as a bit of a Michelle Pfeiffer. I thought I was going to go in and make a difference. I actually learnt kickboxing for a little while. I drove into my little Nissan Pulsar, and there was a big sign on the, on the wall graffiti that said, Go Home Poofters, which was spelt T-A-S. <laughs> and so I thought, clearly, there was a lot of work to do at the school. You know, we had to work on the discrimination and the spelling. But it was just absolutely full on this school, you know, really, really difficult socioeconomic problems. I got, you know, chairs thrown at me. Most of the students didn't want to learn. One time, uh, two parents, two mothers had a cat fight on the Oval. So you can just imagine what it was like teaching their offspring. <laughs> so it was pretty tricky. And so I had all these plans, you know, that I was going to make a difference at the school and I was going to teach them all about theatre and expose them to this culture that they'd never seen before. And so... I organised an excursion for us to go and I had, it was a huge big deal because most of the kids had never been to a play or been to an art gallery. A lot of them hadn't even read a book or anything. They were just really, really not interested in education, a lot of the kids at the school. And so I organised this excursion, had to collect the money, had to get a minivan and drive it into the city and get permission notes. And I think I even chipped in money for some of the kids who didn't pay. It was you know, a really big big deal and so I drove in and it was at the it was a new sort of Australian play and it had rave reviews it was at the Griffin Theatre Company and the kids had never ever been to the theatre before and so I had to really word them up about when you're in the theatre it's live you know the actors can hear you so when you're shouting and talking it's going to interrupt you know so you need to be quiet and we had to go through all this kind of stuff and so I've got all my students and even though I'd given this kind of lecture and we'd talked about it for weeks and all this kind of stuff, when we're in the theatre and walking in, they had no sense of theatre etiquette. Like this, like, hey miss, what do you think? You know, they're yelling out about stuff on stage and about what I'm wearing and they just had no... And I was like, oh no. And then, so we went down, to, we were sitting in the front row, directly in the front row of these kids and as we were walking in, like we're like, excuse me, excuse me, you know, sitting down. Who is sitting in the row behind us but Portia? Okay, Portia and her famous internationally acclaimed actor boyfriend. So they're sitting behind us and she sort of said, hi, how are you? You know, and, um, and I said, oh, yeah, good, thanks. And I asked her what she's been doing. Of course, she's been in this film and that film and miniseries and TV show. And I was like, yeah, that's great. You know, I tried to look like I was, you know, really happy for her as well. And she asked what I was doing. And I said that I was just doing a bit of teaching, you know, and... Um, and then the students actually started saying, teaching, that's not... And they were sort of started butting in and they're like, you don't teach us anything. And they started sort of taking over the conversation. It was really, really embarrassing. Fortunately, the play started, lights went down and the actors came on and that sort of stuff. And, and it was OK. The students, um, they did seem to be enjoying the experience, but there were a few times that they were being noisy and I had to remind them of where they were. But then about halfway into the play... 
the theatre company was using this strobe light and the strobe light makes things glow. So whatever you're um, wearing, you know, if you, your teeth or if you're wearing something white, it just like makes it shine like a beacon. Now, I was wearing this black, what I thought was a really nice and professional woolen black country road jumper and like some kind of um, charcoal trousers, I think, and to the naked eye, looked fine. But underneath the lights and the strobe lighting, every little tiny piece of lint, and there was heaps of it, was just like illuminated, okay? And I was sitting in the front row so everyone could see it, the actors and the students. They were like laughing at the effects anyway, like their shoelaces or any part of them. But then they looked around and saw my jumper and they're like, check out Mrs. Jumper, it's like the Milky Way. And they're they're like, oh, look at, look, look at Miss, it's like a galaxy. And they were laughing so much and so hard And um, they just lost all sense of decorum that I actually had to stand them up. It was fortunately just before interval and I had to walk them out of the theatre. And just as I was walking out, I looked around and I caught Portia's eye and I I knew that I'd always thought that I'd, you know, I'll show you one day. But I had this kind of epiphany that she would always win the race. With people like Portia, you can never, ever win against people like that. But that's okay. Oh, that was Melissa Jacob. I hate this woman. Who is she? You're going to have to tell me afterwards. Then I'll tell all of you quietly. 